Yeah, hello, good evening, thanks for coming along. Uh, uh, we want to dedicate this set to the millions upon millions who have died, who are dying, and will continue to die in the killing fields of corporate and political madness. And further to that, blessings to the people of Gaza.
irrational, uncompromising, beyond need of proof, yet in attempts to moderate our righteous anger, people ask why we don't write love songs. The brain voices of mammoth minions Get away from the looking glass windows of consumerism We create cascading waterfalls of glee A tumbling rush to other landscapes Where dancing summer winds the dark spirits Follow distant futures For all our efforts to create a better world People still see us as outsiders But outside of what? Surely they can see how much we care Or feel the force of the love we share Standing together as a crowd Standing together tall and proud It is we who are the many They who are the few So who's on the outside? Not me! Not you! No! We won't conform to the standards of others When ours are so often so much for all their criticisms, doubt and deceit, they'll never doubt our fire. So what in the world you thinking of? Laughing in the face of love. What on earth are you trying to do? Surely it's up to us. Yeah, me and you. A working class hero is something to be So they tortured and scared you for twenty odd years Then they expect you to pick a career Choice is ours. The choice is yours. Why wait? 
rules rule. Fear is the message, fear is the tool. Fear of self and other, fear of heart and soul. Fear, the savage weapon of mass control. Wherein the crippling dictates of social conformity offer no more than the pretext of security. But we have our love and in that we can be the you that is you and the me that is me. With all the force of life on our side, labels and definitions. Cynics say that we're just naive dreamers, that throughout history dreamers have been condemned, only to be later celebrated as heroes. Mahatma Gandhi had a dream, Martin Luther King had a dream, John Lennon had a dream. Shot dead! But their dreams live on in heart and mind, with the power of love they left behind. But why?
and share my joy young girl young boy and we will sing a love supreme that we might dance the dance of life and feel the promise of our dreams that we might dance the dance of life and feel the promise of our dreams institutionalized, becoming a poor parody of themselves, contained by themselves. There's no point in just mouthing the words, the token tantrums aren't enough. And nor is speed, or we, or acting inside. We don't need exclusive little tribes of their back slapping. Nor their stand-up fights Or the bull trapping Punk spawned another rock and roll elite Another bunch of hypocrites Out to knock us off our feet Mouthing platitudes Like X-Factor trash Talking revolution But pocketing the cash Just another cheap Product for the consumer's head. Is it any wonder I once wrote, Punk is dead? Who's a pretty boy there? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's the five knuckle shuffle. Identity 
stolen by the mega corporations to be sold back as vanities, shaped in media molds of Botox veins, with tanks and folds, and if by chance you are really a big man, a pack of tenants and a tango tag. But let me ask you this. What did they think they're fooling? What silken hand is ever cut away in the battlefield? What emperor's boot ever rotted in squalid trenches? We don't accept stability in exchange for dignity. We don't accept death as a bargain for life. We don't accept this psychic pillage Like when No more than Toxic spilling We take up our beds And we Walk the wall The wall The wall We open our mouths And we Talk the talk The rights of the individual are dependent upon us claiming our individual rights loud and clear beyond the delusion of political choice where the voice that speaks is not your voice but the gutless voice of the passive observer Passive observers do nothing but passively observe. Passively soak up creativity and say, Wow, that was me. Passively soak up destruction and say, Oh no, not us, not me. Turning a blind eye to unpalatable fact, they prefer to put down those who act. They'll be moaning the loss of what might have been Spent their days glued to the screen Confirming the life they've already missed By buying into the Judas kiss While three quarters of the world struggles to exist The other quarter is tipping tapping tittle tattle texts Mobilising mobiles With chatter that never ends
terms of national security, 9-11 was a second heaven. The matter of 3,000 deaths seems to mean nothing against the formidable afterlife. For or against? Against or for? Was a declaration of a lifetime's war against the peoples of the world, one and all. And where fools fear to tread, angels are bound to fall. The fearsome war against terror was born, and the Demonas line was conclusively drawn. Terrorism became defined as any form of political dissent, and suddenly everyone's a terrorist guilty until proven innocent. That's you, babe. That's me. That's you, babe. That's me. That's you, babe. That's me. Up against a wall of political illiteracy. One small error, and we'll be doing time. One small error, and we're on the firing line. On the firing line. But not the gentle goat herd in those wildernesses of desert and hill, nor his milk-mouthed, dark-eyed child tugging on the rag of her mother's coarse cloth skirts. In their timeless innocence, they understand nothing of war. Not those tormented souls driven to the shelter that the whining shells of mammon might defile compassion, destroy grace and erase love. They were neither for nor against, yet in their multitude it is they who are mown down. Always they, always they. Yet it is I, I who knows the fearsome intellect of war, born of it, torn by it, I the politic resolutely against. It is I then, I alone, who must stand against the ignorance of might and the cool sophistication of collateral revenge. My name is known, my address given. I am the enemy, if enemy must be sought. So let them unleash their wretched bonds on me. said that truth is the first casualty of war. But war is also a casualty of truth. Just another nail in the coffin of love. From birth, we're teased into submission by family, school, church and state, who us claiming to protect our innocence will keep at it until we capitulate. From then on, we're easy game. Do this, do that, thou shalt not. Have Lovian dogs chained to the spot. But if our true nature finds its way out, we can bark and bite just as much as shout. For this reason, we are dissuaded at all costs from realizing our true potential. Then, most surely, we have been conditioned to be passive observers. If the puppeteers want war, we've been conditioned to accept it. After all, war only exists through 
massive acceptance. But if the puppeteers were to offer peace, surely we will have been conditioned to accept that too. But whereas war simply requires the masses as cannon fodder, peace requires individuals to realize their own strength. No wonder then that the puppeteers' sights are always set on fracture and division. But for the beauties of peace, there'll be no provision. with their backs against the wall. It's impossible to measure the power of love or to give it its rightful place. Yet only love and love alone can define the true nature of peace. For so long people have been saying no more this, no more that, only to be handed pithy concessions to accommodate their grievances. The puppeteers juggle on the boundaries of our tolerance attempting to ensure our application, determined never to give peace a chance against their program of devastation. And yes, they have tabs on those who they regard as subversives, recorded, digitized, and backed up on hard drive, ones and zeros forever. What's more, it's too easy to be forced back into tokenism, making hollow gestures beneath the shadow of the juggernaut. And with this in mind, it's now or never. Yes, now is the moment, now is the place to take on love and to carry its grace. The line is delicate, mammon blinks, and his acolytes pay homage. Murdoch burps, and the fetid clouds of deception fill unwatched azure skies. Bland, blind corporate security guards lurk as shadow, battles at the ready to beat the head, crack open the skull. But even under threat of bullies and egotists, the spaces have always been inhabited by the gentle and caring, ordinary folk existing on the power of love. Gandhi called it ahimsa. The Greenham women called it the politics of whimsy. But the common name is common decency. The love that creates peace is a deep state of heart. The hate that creates war is a distorted state of mind. Then once and for all, we should leave behind these contortions that so cruelly tear us apart. There is peace if we make it. War is over if you 
wanted. War is over. is a double-edged sword throughout the world. Underprivileged people are employed making armaments to kill underprivileged people like themselves. Puppeteers have their laws and those who impose it. We have ourselves and each other. The puppeteers have their order, a new world order, and those who impose it. We have ourselves and each other. It's easy for them to dismiss as dreamers those who seek peace. But isn't our whole culture built on past dreams? We have ourselves and each other, and that is enough. Through our continued existence, we prove the power of love. For all its horrors pushing people to their limit, histories have never broken the human spirit. However much violence might persist, together we do and can exist. Dancing the dance of life, life lighting life in individual frames. The line is delicate, the lines are drawn. But each and every moment, a new future is born. There's either love or there's devastation. It's a gamble, but no amount of money can ever buy us out of our responsibility to life. Yes, we all do our best. We're all as one. Some of us suffer as others have fun. But until we realize the true nature of our unity, we'll continue to add to the pains of duality. Cabbages and kings. The golden wings of spirit have never been controlled. There never has been proof that violence pays. Yes, the puppeteers are no less than murderers and thieves, shadows in the darkness of night. But we are so much more than that. Love is the power. Love is the hour. This is the time to act. We can give it, we can live it beyond the shadows. Oh, we're given life, so why court death? 
Why frustrate before crucifixes of cold stone? Why bargain our lives for this? Will we ever learn? Military acts are bathed in a holy and wholesome tale. He gave his only begotten that the killing might prevail. Ill begotten stories are blessed to shock and awe. Blessed in his name to unleash the horror. I have heard his frustrate before the Lord. Awaiting his coming, awaiting his words. Consumatum est. Consumatum est. Consumatum est. Consumatum est. Consumatum est. Blessed in his name. To unleash the horror. Pious virgin.
cynicism absolute as innocent spoil their thousands so the puppeteers chug their tawdry monsters. It is with deepest regret we had to inform you that we are at war. At war in the killing field. At war in the workplace. We regret to inform you, regret to inform you that today the sweet angels of mercy were shot through the back of the head. We regret to inform you, regret to inform you that today another Christ, not yet ten years old, was burnt to death by our liberating forces. We regret to inform you tactical response. We regret to inform you executive action. We regret to inform you collateral damage, terrorist threats, massacre, destruction, in a fog of war, happiness will, of course, happen. Each season is a lost memory even before it has existed. Each left and right, no more than a centre. Is that not enough? Yet in our failure to act against hideous dangers of unbridled imperialism, are we not guilty of being gutless passive observers, helpless bystanders, waving flags and mute acceptance? Are we so divorced from humanity that we can let this happen? The culture of protest is the core of the individual soul. One clear voice in the wilderness 
is better heard than all the muddled gabble of babble. Protest cannot be judged by numbers, but through the inner feelings of those who practice it. War and oppression are the logical inevitable consequence of growth capitalism until its roots are torn from the soil the terrible toll will remain a daily reality it's as if those narrow streets were treasure troves as if solomon had cast his riches on those sands each huddled dismembered body was a gem a perfect moment a treasured pearl of existence they are not forgotten if the puppeteers lack compassion then we shall double our own. They can be stopped. If the puppeteers show no love, then we shall show our own. They can be stopped. Oh, they talk about their revolution. Well, that's fine. But the revolution is already won. An imperative, a state of mind that daily, hourly, must be nurtured against any delusions of a dominant culture. Between left and right, there is a universe unmoved by the conflict of them and us. It is we who makes this world around us. It is our victory. And it's up to us to open our hearts and sing, to open our to settle the score. No more cruelty. No more need. The doors of mammon are shut. No more loss. No more need. No more maybe. No more but. devils of doubt, that the flames of resistance may dance again in defiance. Oh, let us dance and let us sing, tear off the chains, that we be free again. We must learn to live with our own conscience to trust our own morality, our own determination, our own self. The material world is a manifestation 
of our own ideas, a graphic reflection of all our hopes and our fears. Love is all or love is not at all. We alone can do it. You alone can do it. I alone can do it. There is love if we make it. There is no authority but ourselves. There is no love without our own. Thank you.